So I'm here on behalf of the UK Industry Task Force on, on peak oil energy security. And this is the launch, as I think many of you know, of our second report. Um, its title is Oil Crunch, a wake-up call for the UK economy. And I think that's a particularly apt title, as you'll hear uh, throughout the morning. It all started three years ago when Jeremy Leggett from Solar Century and Will Whitehorn from Virgin Galactic um, established this task force. And it's a coalition of companies made up of my own company, Arup, Foster and Partners, Scottish and Southern Energy, Solar Century, Stagecoach, and Virgin. And its purpose is very simple. It's to provide a, an industry voice, a united industry voice, on the important issues of peak oil. And without this task force, there is no such cross-industry voice. So our first report, uh, which was published back in October 2008, um, coincided with the credit crunch, and I think for that reason it, it lost a little bit of its initial impact. But then uh, the task force was predicting that the recession would influence the peak oil, and it has, but actually only very marginally. And the, the, we, we think the recession has bought us probably two years of time, so it's pushed back these issues by two years. And today's report warns of this, it warns that we have little breathing space. And this is because the increase in oil price uh, will result in greater market volatility and oil shortages in terms of supply are actually just around the corner. So, uh, given what we're about to uh, say to you, within five years we think that peak oil is going to affect every aspect of our daily lives. It's going to impact our economy, public policy, and actually, to some degree, change the way we live in our cities and communities. So it's a shock, potentially, to the UK economy. Um, obviously, it has to be set in context. So on the one hand, there's a dependence on oil for generating our electricity, and it's much less than it was back in the 70s and 80s. So that's a, a benefit. It's, it's, it's easier than it might have been. But on the other hand, our dependence for, on oil for transport as an integral part of our social and commercial infrastructure is very much greater. And this, of course, enters virtually everything we do and buy. So despite the focus on renewables and alternative fuels, oil really is turning the wheels of the UK economy. And the growing transport sector is, is a fundamental part of the domestic economy. <coughs> So manufacturing and retail business, of course, uh, nowadays widely depend on this just-in-time approach. And that itself uh, relies very much on transport, hence the consequences of oil price entering the marketplace in general. And so that, that rise will find its way into the shelves of our supermarkets and into people's weekly shopping bills. At the same time, um, farming agriculture and materials manufacturing such as plastics all have oil-based ingredients. And the price of those products for sale are going to be directly affected by rising costs of oil. So there's an inflationary uh, general cost of living consequence of what we are saying today. And with the general election only months away, um, somebody said 86 days away, but I'm not sure it's that accurate, uh, the task force has now looked at how peak oil might affect the first term of the new administration. And the highlights, or I could even say lowlights, are these. There's, there's going to be markedly higher prices from all forms of travel. There'll be increased food prices, there'll be increased general retail prices, and increased domestic utility bills. None of these things um, are good for the ears of the government, the incoming government. And the reality is that the most disadvantaged members of our society, sadly, are the ones going to be hit first and hardest.